Today on our 2013 Honda Odyssey, we're going to be installing airlifts, airlift 1000 air helper springs, part number AL60815. These airbags are going to help support the load at the back of your vehicle. These airbags fit between your coil spring. While this doesn't increase the carrying capacity of your vehicle, it does help support loads of up to 1,000 pounds. Depending on the load that you're hauling, you can adjust the carrying capacity with various amounts of PSI inflated inside of your bag. This can be between 5 and 35 PSI. The kit allows the airbags to be inflated independently from one another, and there's also a T-fitting included in the kit, so you can use one valve to control both and have equal inflation on both sides. Before we begin, we'll check some measurements on our vehicle while it's unloaded. In the rear, we're measuring about 30 and a half inches. And in the front, we're measuring about 30 and a quarter. And now we'll recheck our measurements with a load attached to our hitch. Measuring about 29 and a quarter inches. And in the front, we're measuring about 30 and a half. So what that means is our rear dropped about an inch and a quarter and our front raised up about a quarter inch. So this is going to affect how our vehicle brakes, handles, and the direction our headlights are going to point while going down the road at night. Putting some helper springs in the back can help bring us back to that factory ride height. And now we'll take it out on our test course loaded up so we can see what our suspension looks like with no helper springs installed. And now with our airbags installed and our trailer hooked up loading down our vehicle, we'll recheck our measurements. Here at the rear, we're measuring 30 and a quarter. So we're only dropping down a quarter inch from our factory ride height. And we recheck in the front, we're measuring 30 and a half. So we do still have our slight rise in the front, but we've leveled out the back, which will make an effect and bring our headlights back down to true. So overall, returning our ride height closer to factory is gonna bring back some of that braking performance. It's gonna improve ride quality inside the vehicle and also improve that handling. It does this because most of the braking is done in the front. So now our weight can properly distribute into the front like it did when it was unloaded. Handling is improved because the ride height is now even, which makes our suspension geometry come more into its alignment when it's unloaded. So this way it'll help reduce tire wear when going down the road. We'll begin the installation by removing the wheels. You can do this with a 22 millimeter socket. After the vehicle is supported and both wheels are removed, you're going to want to place a floor jack underneath the lower control arm. Now it's safe to remove the bolt holding the lower control arm to the steering knuckle. You'll remove this with a 17 millimeter socket. Now crack the jack slightly to lower the control arm down slowly. Now that all the tension has been relieved from our coil spring, we can safely remove it. Push down the lower control arm. You can now set your spring aside. We'll now remove the jounce bumper with a 14 millimeter socket. You'll need a small extension so you can get up in there and remove it. We'll now set our jounce bumper aside as we're not going to be reinstalling this. Now cut out the template in your instructions, place it on top of the coil spring seat with the hole facing slightly towards the inside and tape it down. Now to make it easier to drill, you can take a piece of wood and put it between your lower control arm and your brake caliper bracket. This will hold it down and just get it out of your way to make it easier. I did take a strap as well to help support the wood because vibrations from the drilling is going to want to make it kind of wobble out of place. So this will hold it in there for you. Now we'll drill out the hole in the location marked on the template. We're going to start with a small pilot hole, but we're eventually going to be drilling it up to a three quarter inch diameter. Now place your airbag with the nozzle facing down inside your coil spring. Make sure both your upper and lower spring mounts are in place. And then set it back on top of your lower control arm. Make sure that it's rotated in the appropriate position. If you rotate it back and forth, you'll feel its seat. And now we can take our block of wood out. Now check and make sure that the nozzle on the end of your airbag isn't going to hit the hole and be rubbing. Position your jack back underneath your lower control arm and slowly raise it back up into place so we can reinstall our bolt. Now you can place your bolt back in. Sometimes taking a large screwdriver can help line that hole back up for you to make it easier. 
Now tighten and torque your bolt to the specifications in your instructions. And now repeat the same process on the other side. Now we're going to run our lines and install our fittings. Now you can install your fittings in any location you want just by drilling a hole. We've decided to mount ours to the hitch using a short bracket, part number 18140. So you'll take your fitting, thread on a nut from the kit, get it to about the appropriate length that you want it to be, then place on a star washer. Then slide this through the hole that you drilled, then place on the rubber washer, followed by the flat washer and another nut. Then snug it up with a 13 millimeter wrench and socket. Now if you're using the T-fitting method, you'll only have one fitting. If you're going to have separate hose fittings, you'll be able to level each side independently. You'll repeat the same process for your another hole. Now we'll install our tubing. Lift up on your airbag and remove the small covering over the inlet. We can then take our air hose, place one of the small clamps over your hose. You want to come down just enough to where you can slide the hose on the fitting. Now we'll feed it through the bottom and up through the opening that we had drilled. Then push the hose onto the end of the airbag. After you've got it fully seated, you can install your small clamp. Push that up. You can use a pair of needle nose to squeeze the clamp and seat it over the hose and the fitting end. After you've got that run out, we'll run our hose back to our fitting that we put in the back. We routed it up over the suspension, trying to stay as far away as possible from the exhaust. Down the underside, going on the inside of our hitch, zip tying it to the hitch and running it down to our fittings. Once over here, we'll give ourselves a little bit of excess, then cut the end with our hose cutter tool. So we'll cut it nice and flush, making sure that it seats properly. Place another clamp on this end of the tubing and then press it onto the fitting that we previously installed. After it's pressed on, use a pair of needle nose pliers to put the clamp up over the fitting ends. Now we'll repeat this same process on the other side, routing the hose to this one. And now if you didn't choose to use the T-method, where you'll have both of yours connected together with a T-fitting to one nozzle, you'll repeat the same process on the other side to your other fitting. Then go back and clean up all of your tubing with the zip ties provided in the kit. Make sure that when you run your line, you've cleaned everything up, that you're avoiding any moving objects, such as your suspension, and any excessively hot objects, such as your exhaust. Now take the heat shield provided in the kit, do a little preparation, bend both tabs inward, and then bend it back outward. This way it leaves a small air gap between the heat shield and the exhaust. This will help dissipate heat. Place your hose clamps over your heat shield and tighten them down using an eight millimeter socket or flat bladed screwdriver. Then cut off the excess with a pair of tin snips. We'll now air them up and check for leaks. The maximum pressure is 35 PSI, so it'll air up very quickly, so be careful not to overfill it. Now spray each fitting and clamp with soapy water and look for the presence of bubbles. If bubbles are present, you have a leak and you'll need to correct it. You can now install the protective caps onto your air fittings and reinstall the wheels. Make sure to torque your wheels to the manufacturer's specification. Do this in a star pattern. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Airlift 1000 air helper springs on our 2013 Honda Odyssey.